Hi everyone, it's Lindy on from Pink Whisper Designs. Today I've got lots of products from Sunny Studio to show you. We're going to be using this brand new little puddle jumper set and I'm also going to show you a really fun way to create your rainy day sky. So let's go ahead and take a look at this stamp set. And look how cute this is. You've got this cute little girl. She's got her little duck rain coat on. Got the little ducks, you've got a puddle, some raindrops, and that cute little frog umbrella. I've placed these stamps onto my mini Misty stamp positioner. I'm just quickly prepping them with my fingers. I haven't used these yet, they're brand new, and I'm just taking any little film off of those so that they'll stamp nice and crisp. I've got some Strathmore Bristol Smooth cardstock under there, and I'm using my Stamp Pendable stamp press to press those out. So let's go quickly to the coloring and I'm going to use yellow and orange to color in these little tiny chicks and then I'm going to use my blender pen to do the blending now these are the zig clean color real brush pens and these are a water based pen and I'm using the zig blender pen just you could use water here so either way would work just fine I just feel I have a little bit more control with that blender pen you do want to clean it off in between colors or if you have too much ink on the blender pen, you can just remove it by scribbling onto some scrap paper. I thought that little chick was a little bit too bright, so I'm coming in with just a little touch of beige to darken that up. Now I did all the rest of the little baby chicks the same way. And then I'm switching over to the light gray. So I've got a little bit of light gray and I'm just gonna add a few shadows. And then I'll add that tea rose to the cheeks of all of these little critters. And later on, we'll be adding a little bit to the little girl's face as well. Now with May green and green, I'm going to do the little frog umbrella. And all of the colors I'm using are listed in the upper left-hand corner as we're going along. So I'll put that darker color down at the bottom and then I'm just going to pull it up towards the top of that little umbrella. We'll keep the top of the umbrella the lightest. Now do keep in mind also that all of the products I'm using today are listed and linked down below and also on my blog. I also want to say that there is a set that coordinates, a die set that coordinates with this set. I did not have it, so I, I'm going to be cutting everything out using my detail scissors, but I will list and link that set of dies for you down below. Now with yellow and may green, I'm going to do the little handle on the umbrella. And then a back to that tea rose for her cheeks and the flesh color to do her face and her hands. And I'm just going to put that flesh color around the edges of her face and then just pull in towards the center. I've got the dark gray to do the boots. I'm putting that dark gray on the inside of the boots and then pulling it out towards the outer edges just to give that a little bit of a highlight. Let's go back to the orange for the beak on her little raincoat. And isn't this raincoat just so cute? I just love this. I just fell in love with this little stamp set. I think it's great for your spring cards, even an Easter card. Any birthday, any spring birthday, this would be so cute. I've got a dark brown for her hair. I'll put it mostly up towards the top of her hair and then just pull it down towards the edges. And then going back to that yellow, I'm going to do the rest of her raincoat. Now with the yellow, as I've mentioned in other videos, sometimes it's a little hard to get the shading that I really want. So I'm going to do the yellow all all over this little jacket and then I'll just pull this up towards the top and then to get a little bit of shadowing I've added the light gray and I'll just use that light gray to get a little bit of shadow. You could also use that beige here as well. And then for her little tights I'm going back to the orange I'll blend out her cheeks just a little bit more. And then with light blue, turquoise green, and cobalt blue, I'm going to color in this little puddle. So I'll start with that lighter color. I'll add that mid blue 
color and then we'll add that darker one around the edges and pull in towards the center, just keeping that highlight in the center of this puddle. I'm just gonna add a little bit of that turquoise green right along the edge. And here's where I'm going to cut these out using my detail scissors. But again, I will link that die set, that coordinating die set down below for you. Now let's take a look at the Sunny Studio Frilly Frames Lattice. You can see this is a two piece die set that if you die cut that all at one time, you can get that lattice work in the center of your frame. I don't need that today, so I'm going to set that aside. All I really want is this really pretty scallop frame, and it has a beautiful stitch border on that inside edge. But what I'm going to do for my top layer is cut away the scallops. That'll leave that stitched rectangle base that we need to do our, our scene. So I'm going to cut away all those little scallops, and then I will show you up close that you'll have that pretty stitched base for our card. And again, I'm using that Strathmore Bristol Smooth 100 pound cardstock. So once I have that trimmed, I'll show you there, you can see that nice stitch frame that we have around the edges of this. And now let's add a little bit of ground. We can either use the bricks, the stones, or that really pretty wood. Now I love this set. I know this is going to be a go-to set for me because I'm always trying to figure out how to ground my scene. These three stamps just have pretty much everything that you would need. So I did decide to use the stones and I placed it in my mini misty and you can see that it's a little bit longer than the misty, but I placed it down below that hinge and it worked out just fine. I'm pressing that out with the stamp pendable stamp press. And now that that is stamped, I'm going to take some post-it tape and I'm going to mask off this bottom section of the panel. And then I've got Lost Shadow and Hickory Smoke Distress Oxide inks. And I'm going to start adding these. Now you may want to heat set this before you do your blending. That ink, that Versafine Onyx Black ink, if it's a little too wet, you might move that ink around. So I did quickly heat set this. I started with that lost shadow and now I'm adding the hickory smoke and I'm coming from that post-it line down into the little walkway. And then I'm also going to grab the black soot and do the same thing. So I'm just going right along that edge. And I did grab a much smaller brush so that I would just get a little shadow there at the top of that little walkway. Now to add a little more interest, I've got my dark gray marker and I'm going to add a little bit of that dark gray to each of these stones right along the bottom and then just pull up towards the top. That'll leave a little highlight on the top of each of these little stones. And again, that's going to add a lot of dimension and interest. So I'll do that for this entire lower section. Now I'm going back to the black soot. I'm going to place a little bit of that directly onto my glass media mat. I've got my distress sprayer. I'll spritz that with a little bit of water. I do want to mask off the rest of that top portion of this panel. And I'm going to spatter that. And that again will just add a little bit more texture here. So let's let that dry. Once that was dry, I took that post-it tape and I'm placing it over that walkway. And you do wanna leave a little tiny bit of a line there just so that you don't have a gap between the sky and the ground. I've gone back to this little set, the Puddle Jumper set, and it has these cute little raindrops in it and they're all different sizes. So I'm going to use my Versamark watermark ink pad. This is an embossable ink pad. And I want this rain to look like it's falling sideways. Kind of like a little bit of a driving rain coming from uh, the side. Now you could do this straight up and down if you want to. I'm just going to angle each of these little raindrops. And then I'm going to sprinkle on some embossing powder. Now you could heat set after you place this first layer of embossing powder on. I decided not to. I decided just to take a chance and continue doing my stamping. 
I didn't want this panel to get too warped with too much heat setting. So I am going to leave it with just that embossing powder on there. Then I'm going to grab another raindrop, one that's a little bit smaller, and then I'll continue filling in some of these areas. So let's do this medium size raindrop. And once that powder's on there, you can see where you've already stamped. You just do want to be careful that you don't touch any of that embossing that you've already placed down there. So let's sprinkle on a bit more of the embossing powder. And then let's grab a smaller raindrop and we'll fill in the rest. Now, if you want to be extra careful, you could place some of your anti-static powder down before you do this. I kind of regretted that I hadn't done that because you'll see that I need to, I'll grab a little brush and I'll brush away any excess that stuck where I didn't want it to. You do want to make sure you brush that away before you do your heat setting. So here you'll see, I'm just grabbing my angled brush and I'll just brush away any excess. Because we are going to be adding ink over the top of this and we don't want embossing anywhere where it might resist our ink that we're going to be placing down. So I've got my heat tool nice and hot and I'm going to go ahead and emboss this. And if you see any little areas where you want some more raindrops, just go back in and add those and emboss that again. So let's grab a nice clean piece of post-it tape, leave that little bit of that black on the bottom showing, and now we can go ahead and do our rainy sky. And for this we're using tumbled glass, peacock feathers, and chipped sapphire. And I'm using the mini dye ink pads. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want a little bit of control here as I apply this ink. So starting with that tumbled glass, I'm just going to scrape it down the page. Just kind of starting off the paper and then pulling that color down. Now we'll go to the peacock feathers. You can see how that's creating these little lines that almost look like the driving rain. So you just want to kind of go in one stroke if you can, uh, starting off the paper and down towards the side. Now I've got a blending brush and I'm going to blend those out just a little bit. And I'm again just starting off the page and pulling it down. And then I'm going to go back to the tumbled glass. I'll use my foam applicator to do this. And I'm just going to fill in any of those white areas. I want the entire background to be this light blue. So I'm just going to apply a little bit of ink. I don't want to uh, apply in too vigorous of a, of a motion. I don't want to remove those little lines we've created. I want to keep those in the background so that it looks like the rain is kind of driving down uh, on that angle. Now I'll grab the peacock feathers and I'm going to come from that tape up into the scene. I want to create a little shadow here down where the sky meets the ground. And then I'll go to the chip sapphire and do the same thing. I just won't come up quite as far. With the peacock feathers, I came up about an inch and a half. And with this, I'm just going to go up about a half an inch. And then I'll go back to that lighter shade the peacock feathers and I'll just blend that together a little bit more up into that sky. So you could keep blending this until you get that color or that look that you want. Now with the peacock feathers I'm going to place a little bit on my glass medium mat. I'll pick that up with a small brush. This is a number zero brush. I just want some tiny little spatters in that sky just to tie everything together. So now we can remove that tape. You'll see how pretty that looks. Now for a few little splashes, I want a couple little splashes up over top of that little walkway. So I'm grabbing the little splashes from the same set. Again, this set has so many little pieces. I just think it's fantastic. You get the raindrops and the puddles and the little uh, splashes. It's just 
so cute. So now that that's done, I've got the puffy cloud border. This is from Lawn Fawn. And these are nice little stitched puffy clouds. So that's going to coordinate nicely with the stitch edge that goes around our frame. And now I'll run that through the Sizzix Sidekick machine. And this will sit at the top of our card. And I want to add a little ink to this. So I'm going to take that lost shadow and just come up from the bottom of the cloud just a little bit. Just want it to look a little bit more like a rain cloud. And then I'll go to that hickory smoke and just add a little bit more of a darker look down towards the bottom. Once that's all set, I cut that down to size. And now we can add the sentiment for the front of the card. And that will say, waddle you know. And on the inside of the card, it'll say, it's your birthday. So this is really cute. And again, these sentiments just coordinate perfectly with these stamps. So I've got some really pretty yellow cardstock for my card base. It measures four and a quarter by 11 inches. I've scored it at five and a half inches and that'll create a standard A2 size top folding card. So I'm going to place it right inside my mini Misty and then I'm going to place this sentiment a little bit lower on the card a little bit below the halfway mark because I do want to add some items on the inside of the card. So once I stamped that I realized that that little birthday, the end of the word birthday had a little curve in it. So I'm not going to redo this. I'm just going to make that work to my benefit. We'll make it look like we meant that to happen. So let's add this little duck in the pond and then we'll add this little chick right up under that little part of the sentiment that curved upwards. So again, it'll look like we did that on purpose. We'll come back a bit later and we'll add a few little splashes. I've got this pretty scalloped frame that we created earlier and we're going to go ahead and center that on the card. And now we can go ahead and add this panel. I'm using the Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive to add everything to the card. It's a nice, secure adhesive, and it's easier to use a glue because you can slide it around a little bit and make sure you have that lined up perfectly. Now I've got a little paper towel, and I'm just going to rub off any excess ink that was on top of this because those rain drops are going to resist any ink that's on top of them. So you do want to make sure you get rid of that so it doesn't rub off onto your hands. Now let's add our little cloud to the top. And then we can finish off the scene. We've got that other puddle. And then our cute little girl. And I'm just going to glue everything flat. You could certainly pop up some of these items if you prefer. And we've got our little frog umbrella. And then let's add a few little ducks down here at the bottom. I did just add the two little chicks and then later on, I'll come in with one more. I just thought it needed just one more. Here's where I'm going to the inside, and I'm going to add those little splashes. And I really think these little touches really finish off a card. And then I've got my Wink of Stella clear glitter pen, and I'm going to add a little sparkle to the umbrella. You do want to clean it off when you're changing color because remember, we're using water-based ink, so we want to make sure that we don't transfer that color. Now, if you're using your Copics or your alcohol markers, you don't have to worry about that. We'll add a little sparkle to the puddles and the little splashes. And then with a white gel pen, I'm going to add a few highlights. And I will add three little dot, dots to each of her cheeks. 
And then I did realize I didn't add a little sparkle to these splashes on the front of the card, so I'm going to quickly add that. And then there's some also little stamps in this set that will give little ripples to the puddle. There's a couple different versions of this. I just grabbed this one and I'm just going to add that just for, again, a little bit more interest in that water. And here's where I decided to come in with that one more little baby chick and add it here in the front of the puddle. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at our finished card. And I, I love the inside as much as I like the front because it just kind of finishes everything off. And this little set, again, is a brand new set and I just think it's so sweet. I love these little stamps that create the ground with the wood, the rocks, and the brick. So that's a really fun stamp set that I think you'll use over and over again. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you don't miss a single video. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you all have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.